Hi, I'm Karen Jaspert, and joining me today is Paul Richard Baker. And today's date is January 26th, 2010. Thank you, Mr. Baker, for coming in and having you share your memories with us. Um, let's get just a little background history, uh, like your age. I'm 82. 82, and you're living in uh, Westminster? Near Taylorsville. Near Taylorsville. Okay. Um, um, okay. And what did you do for a living most of your life? Well, the last 25 years I worked for the state of Maryland, School for the Deaf in Columbia. Okay. And before that? I worked with my uncle on a farm for 15 years. And what kind of farm was that? General farming. General. Okay. And you also had an uncle that had a worm seed production. Was that the same farm you just were talking about? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. Donald Megan. Pardon was me? It, Donald Megan was his name. Donald Megan? Yeah. Okay. And what years did he uh, have that in production? Well, that, this particular distillery was in production from nine, approximately 1940 to 1965. And what made him go into that type of business? Well, that I really can't oh. tell you. Okay. It's a crop that originated in Carroll County, as far as I know. And my grandfather originally built the distillery, George, George Megan, in 1940, because he, he had been in production with his brother-in-law, Clarence Wright. and. Uh, they separated partnership, the, the partnership, and my grandfather, George, went into business for himself with his two sons, George, uh, not George, but uh, Francis and Donald. So the three of them operated the, the distillery together. So it was called uh, worm seed production. What is worm seed? Worm seed is an oil, oil chenopodium. It's Medi it's a medicinal type thing for worm worms. For humans and animals? Yes. Mm -hmm. And how did they get the oil from the plant? Do you remember? Well, the plant was like a tomato transplant. It was planted in that, that way and was harvested in late August, early September after it matured, it was cured, left cured like hay, gathered up when dew moisture was on it, and loaded on a wagon similar to loading wheat, and it was taken to the distillery where it was put into kettles and steamed under pressure, and the oil was rendered from the plant through steam pressure. Being lighter than water, it floated to the top and was skimmed off in that, per, that way. Mm -hmm. And then from there, where did they take it? Well, it usually was taken to New York. In, By train or wagon, or how did they haul it? Well, one time, Mongols took it to New York on a, tr on a truck. Mm -hmm. Wooden barrels or? No, st steel drums. Steel drums. Mm -hmm. They were, they weren't 55 gallon, they were, I'd say, I, I don't know the exact liquid capacity, but the oil was sold in, in pound measure, not gallons. Mm. Okay. So you took it to New York and then New York took it to? I don't know what New York did with it. I guess pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. processed it. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting. Um, you had told, we had had a, uh, a talk previous to this, and you had tell, told me about your um, father or your uncle was taking it on a wagon down the road and it was smoking because it was hot from the steam. Oh, it was my, Donald Megan's cousin who was hauling it, what they call the, after it was cooked, distilled, it was put on the truck and taken out on the farm field somewhere and unloaded. And it, we operated 24 hours a day. Mm. And of course at nighttime, 
when it was cool, the steam coming off the, what was pulled out of the kettle was called a herb. And a fellow passed my cousin, his cousin said, Mister, your load's on fire. He said, let the damn thing burn. <laughs> the hotter, the better, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, they had to build pools for the overflow because it was going into uh, the creeks and all. They had a, re a reservoir where the, the water from the distillery went, perked into the ground, not into the stream. Mm -hmm. Because the stream, the local stream, was Sam's Creek was right close by, mm -hmm. and it was retained in a in a pit, so that it wouldn't access the stream, Sam's Creek. And what did they discover by doing it that way? I think we read in uh, one of the articles that was published from Baltimore about that they're glad that they did that because they had seen. Well, it was what just charging hot water into the stream, and that wouldn't be good for the wildlife. Yeah. But I thought they had uh, also seen that they had pulled a lot more of the oil. They had, were loose, losing some. So by doing Well, it, they had what they call a redistill. The original water that was captured off the, the first distill, distillation mm -hmm. was put into a tank called the redistill. And they redistilled the water again mm -hmm. and got a, a better grade of oil. Mm -hmm. So that was a good idea to have them have that overflow pond. Yeah, yeah. and they got a different specific gravity with the redistill oil. Okay, so why, we also know that the uh, worm seed is, a, is really a weed, yeah. and it grows locally in uh, the southern states. But up here, it did better because, the, I guess, the well-fertilized land that we had from all the farming. Well, it seems the soil was conducive to good Worm, uh, worm seed growth. Mm -hmm. So we actually have the seed growing here where they just had the plant in the south. Yeah. We actually had the seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else that you want to add about the worm seed production that I haven't covered? Well, it was, it was hard, hard work. It was all manual labor from planting the seeds early in the spring to cut section of a woodlot, cut the trees down and planted it in what's called the new ground. Where the soil was very fertile and it was conducive to good plant growth. So the plants were pulled, similar as you would tomato or any other pepper plant or cabbage, planted with a two-man planter and allowed to grow. Usually we planted in May harvested the latter part of August or July. Of course, the crops, any crop it depends on the type of weather. Right. If you have plenty of rain, you get better growth. And when it's matured, then it's cut at ground level with a hatchet-like device, let cured like hay, loaded on a wagon like, hay, like wheat. And it was your turn to be distilled your usually called on the phone, mm -hmm. come do your job, which is a pitch it off the wagon into the kettle. Mm -hmm. From there, when the kettle's full, then the, the, the lid is clamped on it, and the steam from the, from the boiler cooks oil, the plant and gets the oil out of it. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's basically the simple process, but it's all hand labor. Mm. Sounds like hard work. It is. <laughs> um, what did what happened to the the uh, distillery after your uncle quit producing it? Well, the parts of it was sold off. The boiler went to a gentleman who lived in Florida, or excuse me, in Georgia, and where the the pipe and the other materials went. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Were there other uh, places in the area that did this also? Oh yeah, there's numerous. There's a distillery in, in Taylorsville itself. Mm -hmm. There's one in Woodbine. I don't know whether it's still there or not. Mm -hmm. And there was one that, like I said, my grandfather had with his brother-in-law, was there on Sam's Creek itself. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know whether there's any more or not offhand. Mm -hmm. All righty. Anything else that you can want to contribute or talk about? I think you told me about the uh, tornado when you had to go up to the uh, wagons and cover them because oh, it was yeah, going to have a bad one, storm. This was in the 50s. It was late summer. And we were working at the distillery and the storm was coming up in the, in the west. And two, uh, two other men and myself went to this farm behind St. James's Methodist Church to cover up the wagon to keep the rainwater out of it because rainwater on worm seed reduced the production considerably. Mm. Once it was cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was, wagon was in the field. So we went up there and to cover the wagon up, used my uncle's pickup truck, which had a cap on the, the back, pulled alongside the wagon. I got up on the wagon by the pickup truck. The other two men threw the canvas up to me to unfold. I unfolded, got partly, the load partly covered, and the wind started blowing, the roof started going off the barn. I thought it was time for me to get off the wagon, so I jumped <laughs> off the wagon onto the truck, off the truck into the ground, wrenched my knee, and the wind blew the wagon away about 50 feet mm. and took the cap off the pickup truck. And I ended up with a torn knee. And the other two guys were fine. They, would they go underneath the truck or something to hide yeah. from well, the storm? They didn't move the truck. We didn't end up, we just laid on the ground holding on to the grass. <laughs> <laughs> that was a close call. Were you ever in another area that had a tornado? Yeah, when I, my wife, Dayton, my woman that was to be my wife, we were, they lived on 407, and I don't know whether it was Friday or Saturday evening. It was really getting dark back in the West, and my mother-in-law to be said, don't go now, there's a terrible storm coming up. Well, you know, being young and stupid, <laughs> we left anyway. So we got down just below St. James' Church, and their barn went, the roof went, lightning hit this farmhouse, the roof went off. Mm. All the stuff, debris went over her head and never touched, I had a 39 Ford, and never, never hit that, never did any damage to it. Hmm. Just went right over you. Went over it. <laughs> So, blew, blew several buildings away nearby, mm. but uh, the good Lord was willing to preserve me to be an old man. And to be here to tell your story. To be here to tell the story, <laughs> yeah. Well, I do appreciate your time, Mr. Baker. I enjoyed it, and I hope others will. And we'll have to give the website to your children and have them check it out. Okay, well, thank you kindly. I was glad I could provide some information. Thank you so much. Worm medicine for um, my grandfather said when he was a kid took the oil he mother gave him one drop for every year of his age and one drop for the worm. <laughs> yeah, could humans could get it? You know, you always tell your kids after yeah, they yeah. washed their hand or playing dirt, wash your hands, or you get worms. Right. Well, this was the medicine to prevent that. It's no longer available, though, is it? I mean, that's yes, but it's uh, made uh, synth synthetically yeah. because uh, I think Well, it's like everything else you buy that's artificial. It's artificial. Well, like a thing comes to my mind is vanilla. You can get real vanilla and you get artificial vanilla. Right. What chemists do, you take a pinch of this, a dash of that, and a cup of this, put it together, and you got artificial vanilla. It's not the real stuff, but it's artificial. And I think they, they closed down because the government took over, didn't they? The, uh, the scientists, because they were... I think well, they could make it scientifically as yeah. opposed to going out and doing it the hard way. Right. 
I don't know the chem I don't know the chemical makeup of worm seed at all. I have no idea. Well, it's got. When did you? When did the uh, company close down? What year did you stop producing? In the mid '60s, around '65, I, huh. as I can recall. From the '40s to so the mid '60s. Late. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, worm seed has been around a good while because my grandfather he was born in 1879, so. He said his mother gave him worm seed oil or worm, worm medicine when he was at home. So it's been available for a long while. It's just that modern chemistry has taken over. Yeah. So they can control the dosage too. Yeah. Well, you, you see many of your things that you buy today, you got artificial this, and a lot of them will say no artificial additives and what have you. But there's so much, it's artificial. Plastic is artificial. Yeah. It's made a dip, pinch of this and a dash of that. You got yeah. nylon, rayon, all kinds of things that are not natural. 